This is DevOps in Agile Way Podcast. Hello again, everyone. It's close to the end of the year, so we can do some kind of you know summary of the year and look a little bit into into the next one but i will do it in a little bit different way i will not start with the summary of this year this will be the next episode i will focus on what internet says about the future about the next year about the trends and also what internet said about the trends for this year and what is interesting i'd like to start with some thought that if you look in the internet for anything really but in this case for what is the future what is, what are the trends for devops in next year etc etc you can find a lot of articles about this and every single article will give you different number of ideas and of course it's up to the authors how many of them they will give, right? But I believe giving more than three or five is already too much. Why? Because, let's be honest, the year has only 52 weeks. And if you have, I have, uh, right now I have opened the article where I have 26 DevOps trends. This means that you as a DevOps, if you want to follow all of those trends, you have like two weeks in the year, excluding all type of vacations, free days, etc., etc. You don't have it at all to follow those. It is impossible. If everything is in focus, nothing is in focus. The same here. If everything is the new trend, nothing is really. But let's go through it a little bit. This article, by the way, is on simplylearn.com. I will say this. I agree with the high level here, but not in details. Let's say this way. Okay, so high level, uh, what will be in demand? Yes, that's fine. But in details, how many of those things uh, are listed? I disagree. And I already can shorten the, this list by like combining things together. For example, trends which are listed as first three of them if is this devsecops serverless computing and microservice architecture so first of all it's not changing okay this is the same what we can find as a trend for current year and for sure for previous years etc etc this is something what we still and constantly focusing on what means that we understand that the topic is important but we also know that there is a lot of things to be done in this area then we have AI ops, and this is quite well. It's not new, right? AI ops, ML ops is with us for some time already, but this year was kind of uh, let's say boost with all of those AI based companies with ChatGPT, OpenAI, things like that. This year gave a lot into this area, so. Generally, as I d disagree completely to have like things like AI ops, ML ops, shit ops, whatever, the AI trend in DevOps will be more and more visible. That's for sure. Uh, next one, of course, we have also Git ops. We have there. Let me just check if there is yes AI ops, ML ops again. Do we have anything more about ops? No, that's good. So there is a lot of ops inside. So we already can eliminate like three or four points. Low code applications, it's another one. Um, honestly speaking, I am big enemy still of low code or no code applications. I believe this solution is great for very simple, very small applications, not for something big. But maybe this will change. We'll see. I'm still not big fan. I said about containerization or microservices earlier, right? So this was the third point. But then we have Kubernetes, Docker, containerization. So four points in one. It's all about microservices, really. And, uh, you know, having Kubernetes as a, something separated, I don't like it either. I know that Kubernetes is big. I know that the ecosystem, the whole landscape around Kubernetes is really, really, really big. And this is a huge topic. But on the end of the day, Kubernetes itself is just the platform, just in quotes. And just, again in quotes, one tool. Listing this separately, the same like Docker, uh, is not necessarily what I really like to see. I, I would say microservices and microservices approach. Infrastructure as code, 
I love to see it because I'm in infrastructure as code for some time. Around half a year right now, I'm in infrastructure as code also as my role is developer advocate at Spacelift, where we do things around infrastructure as code. I see more and more the gap here. So there is a lot of work to be done for infrastructure as code. I will go to this uh, in the one of the next episodes. So this is like a general episode, like overview. The next one will be about the past, passing year. And uh, another one will be about my prediction for the future. So what next? Cloud platforms, SRE, vulnerability management. This can be part of DevSecOps, right? Analytical DevOps. This is very interesting. We can say that the observability will have more and more impact on the whole work around DevOps uh, driven companies. Application performance analysis, again, observability. Hybrid deployments. Here we talk about hybrid environments, hybrid cloud, right? So private and public clouds. But I will go a little bit deeper with that or wider with that. And I will not say only hybrid, but also multi-cloud, where hybrid is like a subset for multi-cloud. Edge computing. There is somewhere, there was uh, also IoT, I think, or maybe not. This is also growing area, right? We have more and more IoT devices at home. There is a huge potential market for like industrial IoT. Things we even do not think that they can be treated as a IoT, more or less. This is really growing thing and I believe we should look on this direction as well. Data observability, again, part of the observability. Platform engineering, something mm, not really very new but i believe this this year and probably previous one was like a you know boom for this approach hopefully for the approach not for the buzzword uh, because this is also what i am observing that the buzzword platform engineering becomes more and more popular and all devops teams now change their their names to platform engineering teams what is stupid let's be honest. Then we have cloud native infrastructure. So generally clouds and cloud adoption. This is still something with, which is with us for many, many years already, but still we are not there. That's a little bit discouraging that we have clouds for so many years around and we still not adopted it, not adopted them like as we should, but also this gives us a lot of potential possibilities, a lot of uh, opportunities, and we still learn how to properly adapt, right? So growing type of services, how many new services, new approaches are provided by cloud vendors, we can do more and more and more interesting things in clouds. And also our approach to cloud is changing, and not only to cloud itself to what cloud offers right so if you remember i had very nice interviews somewhere on the beginning of this uh, podcast with with uh, for example sam williams and we discussed how serverless can boost your business how serverless can boost your poc processes so this is quite quite important to focus yourself around cloud native infrastructure cloud native approach and adoption uh, in the enterprises this is very interesting because i think today with enterprises we have two speeds really so we have enterprises which uh, where the devops is adopted well or not it works or not it is completely adapted in disastrous way but anyway it is adapted and there are businesses which are just started to look into this direction or even don't recognize it yet so there is a lot of work in front of us in order to bring proper and this is very important proper devops practices into the enterprises because very often what we do wrong in devops world we just do the same thing what we do wrong with agile when agile said self-organizing teams like teams where you are able and you are responsible to do things it doesn't mean that you don't care about anything what is around your team and this is what we forgotten too often this is what will not work in enterprise 
especially enterprise where the regulations are high and we need to adapt our process to specific case. For example, if you work with very highly regulated environment, you are not allowed just to take Jenkins and install it and say, hey, I have CICD. You can do it in very small startup. You can do it in many other organizations, but not necessarily in very highly uh, regulated one. The reasons are different. It's not the episode about this. Cloud services. Again, this is about the cloud native uh, and cloud at all adoption. Toolset. So for Toolset, they mentioned monitoring, deployment, automation, and uh, I would add more things there. But anyway, this is something what I st start covering in my CICD.run framework for designing CICD. And there is a section for Toolset, but I'm not thinking about tools in terms of the names, etc., etc. but tools as a, some landscape in the organization, okay? And finally, uh, we have two very interesting points there, 25th and 26th. One is the training and second is pandemic effect. So, yeah, for the pandemic effect, we can say we are a couple of years after the pandemic right now, or the pandemic started. We learned a lot, really painful way. The pandemic changed our landscape, but changed our landscape not from the perspective of tool set, at least not toolset used directly by DevOps to deliver their work, but toolset which is around, for example, starting with simple things, how we organize our meetings, right? It may be Zoom, it may be MS Teams, it may be Google Meet, whatever. We start to learn how to use those tools in order to conduct meetings. So previously, I used to work at IPAM where my teams or teams where I was part of we were really spread around the world. So for me, this perspective of the pandemic wasn't that or scary or new or problematic because most of my meetings were done as remote ones. But for people who all their lives worked in the environment where they meet with people like face to face, this was very problematic. And I know that. Also, you know, even if we have online meetings, it's very good idea to have face-to-face -face meetings from time to time. During the pandemic, it wasn't possible. The pandemic changed the landscape. The pandemic changed the this soft area of DevOps. And DevOps become, in my opinion, even more important as a glue, as a transmission belt in the organization, in the teams. And the second point mentioned here was training and also I see this as a very important one. And I observe, I don't know if this is also what you see, but what I see right now is we have more and more very valuable, this is very important, very valuable attempts to create some trainings, programs for DevOps. Why it is very important to, to say valuable? Because it's easy to, well, I will tell it, it's easy to cheat people that the program for DevOps is very valuable because DevOps is complicated enough to hide the real value or hide the, that there is no real value behind this program. DevOps needs to go through a lot of technologies, a lot of approaches, a lot of methodologies. So this is very hard and very complicated process. I don't want to say that other programs like, for example, development bootcamps or whatever, like like Python bootcamps or, or um, I don't know, .NET bootcamp is, uh, is easy and nothing compared to DevOps. It is, pro it is big thing as well and it must be done properly. But what I mean is that if we talk about specific programming language bootcamp like Python ones, we have like one main tool which we use through the program. With DevOps, you cannot say that, unfortunately, in this case. So trainings are very important. And now, as I said, I agree with the list. I do not agree with the number of items there. However, I believe this is very nice reading. I said it is simplylearn.com and the article is called 26 DevOps Trends Reshaping Tech in 2024, Breaking Silos. Quite interesting read, and I recommend it to you. 
to finish this episode, I will go to the trends for DevOps engineering in 2023. It is blog in CNCF, posted on January 17th this year, so quite old. And let's see what trends they mentioned there and how it resonates with the trends for the next year. So f they have for for sure they have less listed, less item listed because only six. What is good? And what we have there? We have continued adoption of cloud native technologies. There was a point for the next year as well. Increased focus on security and compliance. Again, we have this point. Greater collaboration between development and operation teams. It was not mentioned there directly. But still, I believe that DevOps need to grow into be this glue. And it's not only hard skills. This is something what I'm, in quotes, fight on LinkedIn with people who try to say that DevOps is only the technical stuff. It's not. Uh, fourth point, continued evolution of automation and AI. We had a couple of points for this, right? And it was uh, quite good to see this point because this point didn't mention anything related to uh, ChatGPT or things like that. It was just, I think, before boom exploded. Fifth point, multi-cloud support with infrastructure as code. So we have two elements here, which uh, we also had in this 26th item list. So multi-cloud or hybrid cloud and infrastructure as code, right? So Still, we're still not there. And sixth, greater emphasis on diversity and inclusion. So very, very good to see this point here. And inside this point, we have things like opening up to external teams, skill development, things uh, related to pandemic, things like that. And this is very important. And now, abruptly ending this episode, because the recording already is very long. It was very interesting to read both of those articles together to see that not that many things really changed between them. In next episode, I will discuss with you what I think about the, about this year. And in the another one, we'll go with some predictions. We'll have a game. So I'd like to hear your opinions. What do you think about this year in DevOps area? What do you think will happen next year in DevOps area? And I can comment it in the next episode. So please comment, please send me your uh, opinions and we'll see what we can do together next time. Thank you very much. Have a good one and see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of DevOps and Agile Way podcast with your host, Pave Yukidosh. Subscribe, comment, and do not forget to check our next episodes. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Stay curious.